Kia ora and good afternoon to everyone. Um, I'm Fiona White from the Financial Markets Authority and I'm really delighted to be here. This is something that I'm quite passionate about in terms of consumer rights, so I'm really pleased to be here. So what I'm going to talk with you about over the next few minutes is, well, who are the Financial Markets Authority? What do we do and how can you get in touch with us? Then I'm going to look a little bit more about what can you expect from your financial services provider. So it's going to cover off the consumer rights piece. Then I'll look at a case study um, from a, a gentleman who was happy to tell his stories in the hope that other people can learn from his mistakes. And if we get time towards the end, I'll talk a little bit about the types of complaints we're seeing at the moment and then um, maybe the types of products that are actually causing those complaints like foreign exchange trading and binary options. I'm not sure if any of you are familiar with those. Okay. So. All right, so who are we? Who's heard of the Financial Markets Authority? That's good, we've got a few people here. So for those of you who haven't, uh, we are a Crown Enterprise and we were established in 2011. And our mandate and our vision is building fair, efficient, transparent financial markets. And you might look at that and go, that's a bit of a mouthful. What does that actually mean? And what do we do on a, on a daily, monthly basis? So you can kind of think of us in two respects. One is that we're a bit of a guard dog out there in the financial markets. And two, we're a guide dog. And so... If we think about it in terms of the guard dog, since about December last year, there's been quite a change in the financial services legislation with the introduction of the Financial Markets Conduct Act. So what that actually means for you and for savers and investors is that there's a lot more protection and there's a lot more rights. So the FMA now has the power to license, supervise and monitor providers of and their conduct. We also have stronger powers and we're able to intervene where we, sorry, just checking out the right slide there, we're able to intervene where we might see some misleading or deceptive conduct or potential harm, and we have some remedies through the fair dealing provisions of the law. And if you think about us, um, perhaps in your perspective in terms of the consumer piece, we actually have a section dedicated on our website, um, a tab called Consumers, and there's a lot of great information in there. I've listed a few of the recent subjects that we've got, and maybe not all of you can see them down the back, but we talk about things like um, preparing to invest and ways to invest, uh, also choosing and tracking your investments. And then we have a what's new section, and so whatever our latest tip or guide sheet is, that information will be there. So how do you get in touch with us? Okay, so we have an 0800 number, which is actually based here in Christchurch, the call centre, and we also have our website, which we, um, you can make a complaint or report some information to us. I've also spoken with our friends in terms of disability, and we do have fax numbers, and we receive the odd letter for people that may not have internet access. So for those of you that do, perhaps pop onto the website and you'll be able to find that. What are the kinds of things that we really like to hear about? And I was really intrigued and interested in some of the conversation that arose out of this morning's discussion and question time. And some of the things that were being raised really did sound like conduct or behaviour, what was going on in the marketplace. Those are exactly the kinds of things that we'd like to hear about. So most financial services providers in New Zealand need to be licensed now. And what you can expect, so when I say financial services providers, I hope I haven't lost some of you. I expect that you might, it's a bit of a, a mouthful. Some of the types of people we're talking about would be KiwiSaver providers, superannuation schemes, financial advisors, auditors, um, discretionary investment managers, derivative issuers, peer-to-peer -peer lenders. It's kind of a new form of being able to invest and borrow and equity crowdfunding platforms. So there's quite a new range of financial service providers that have come to the market. And if you're not sure who those businesses might be, there's a list and registers section on our website as well. So if we want to look to, and there's some sheets that are going to be about to be handed out, uh, what you can expect from your financial service provider. So there's five key things that you as consumers 
are ex entitled to expect. You're entitled to expect competence, that your financial service provider has the knowledge and the skills to provide that financial service that they say that they can promote and provide. You're entitled to be treated honestly and fairly. And so sometimes that might take into account things like conflicts of interest. You're entitled to be informed, and this is one that's quite I'm quite passionate about as well, is sometimes people might not have the confidence and if they're being sold something or it sounds like a good idea, and I think someone this morning talked about some insurance services, walked in and asked for one and walked out with a suite of four different types of insurances. So that kind of time, I just... One of the key things I'd like people to feel confident is with to ask questions and if you're not comfortable with the answers or if you feel like you're being railroaded, just to t step back, don't rush into anything, take your time and ask for that information again or, or look elsewhere from another provider. Uh, so we've got a couple of other things there. To know, you're entitled to know how much you're actually paying for and what you're paying for. And so that might include things like commissions where you might not actually pay money up front, but the financial service provider will be um, recompensed by the actual um, agency that they're working through. And then you're all entitled to have your complaints and problems dealt with properly. But I feel like I don't need to go into that too much because the dispute resolution schemes have done a fantastic job this morning about that already. But this is in relation to financial services. So you might be interested to know that on average, New Zealanders or Kiwis lose about $6 million a year in investment scams. It's quite horrific, huh? So the lure of, oh, I think I could make a little bit of extra money is often quite powerful. So let's have a little look at John's story. What happened here? Well, John's not his real name, but he was an experienced investor. He's a chartered accountant. He had his own property, Kiwi Saver scheme, um, superannuation, he also was used to investing in shares in New Zealand. And then last year he got contacted by a company um, and he lost 39,000 US dollars or around about 55,000 Kiwi through what we often know as a boiler room share scam. And if you haven't heard of that term before, sometimes it's just people offshore that have got a, bought a, a calling list from someone and they're aggressively calling you. I'm sure many of you have experienced those calls yourselves or certainly had clients that are telling you about them. And one of the key messages there is don't be afraid to hang up if you're not comfortable with that. Okay, so how did it all start for John? Well, like I said, he got a phone call from an overseas company and it was kind of like a survey or a research type of questionnaire and they wanted his opinion on the New Zealand economy. So it wasn't obviously like a cold call type thing, you know, you can engage people a little better. And then about a week later, he then actually received a call um, from a trading company. And again, because they'd had dialogue and they were discussing, clearly he felt some comfort and decided to invest with them. When did he actually realise it was a scam? Sadly, not until it was too late and he was trying to get his money back and nothing was forthcoming. And because in that situation it was an overseas company, there was no dispute resolution service and there was no protection for him. So you might be thinking, oh, well, he's an accountant and he's an experienced investor and did that really actually hurt? I know 55 grand is quite a lot of money, but maybe he could have you know, managed that. But like a lot of people, we find that he actually had borrowed that money on his credit cards, so was then having to pay it back. So what were his, John's key messages? choosing New Zealand financial service providers, and some of the warning signs, those cold calls. Another addition to the Financial Markets Conduct Act was the, the fact that cold calls are actually illegal in New Zealand now if they're for financial services, so just hang up. You don't have to defend yourself, you don't have to engage with them, just move on. And just quickly at the end, the most recent types of complaints that we're seeing are largely from people who can't get their money back. Uh, and some of these complaints come from overseas as well as perhaps in New Zealanders who've invested overseas. People that might be providing financial services without registration, frauds and scams. 
Now, we've kind of run out of time in terms of talking about foreign exchange and binary options, but what I will say in terms of binary options is that this quote from the FBI, which is present day, and he says, they say that the perpetrators behind many of the binary options websites are primarily criminals who are located overseas and they're really only interested in one thing, and that's taking your money. So if you haven't heard about binary options, do feel free to come and have a chat in the break. And I just wanted to draw your attention to our website, again, to the consumer section, to the What's New page. Do have a little look on that. John's case study is a video that's accessible through there, and is the, as is the what to expect from the financial services providers.